In this presentation, we will take a look at the adjusting entry related to business credit cards using our simple cash basis bookkeeping method. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We're going to open up our cash basis bookkeeping file here, QuickBooks file within the QuickBooks data file. We're going to open up the QB1 file. And we're also going to take a look at some of our documentation for the credit cards. So these are going to be the forms that we're going to provide at the end of the year, the credit card statements, or at least a summary of the credit card statement information. We'll talk more about what we are meaning here in a second. So 2019, uh, the docs that we got, these are client provided documents. We're going to take a look at the credit card statement. I'm going to open this up, right click, open with the Adobe Reader. And we'll take a look at the same for February. So we had the credit card statement. So we're going to look at client provided docs and we're going to open the credit card statement. So we only have these two months here. Here is the QuickBook file, the home page open, open windows open by going to view and open windows list. We're going to open up our report now, which is going to be the reports up down. We're going to go to the accounting and taxes and the trial balance. We're going to change the dates from 010119 to 123119. So let's remind ourselves what we did with the credit cards. So we, we paid the credit cards under the cash basis when we saw a payment happen. Under the simplified method, we said, hey, we're not going to get into the credit card allocation of the expenses because a lot of times there might be business and personal on the credit card and or if the full balance isn't paid off, then it could cause us problems. Under our simplified method, we basically said, hey, uh, we have this account here that we're going to call a credit card expense. Here you can see it here. Here's the credit card expense. If we double click on that, there we have it. Now, these are the two payments we made on the credit card. Problem is, of course, that if you put just credit card expense on like a tax return or financial statement, it would either mean bank charges, like the charges that the credit card had, or it wouldn't be that proper of an expense because we should be allocating it to some other grouping, whatever we use the credit card to make payments for. So under this method, we were doing this so that we know at the end of the year we can regroup it. And we would often do this if we had a method where the credit card isn't paid off in full or if the credit card's used for business and personal. And we know that we're going to have to go through there anyways and kind of break out the business versus the personal. And so what we'll have to do, and we could do this as we go, like we could look at the credit card statement and try to categorize the payments that are on the credit card statement during each month of that we would go through this just to make this process easier at the year end. Uh, or we can just group up all the credit cards and say, hey, you're going to have to basically categorize the expenses so that we can reallocate this amount to whatever uh, amounts are there. So let's let's do that here. We're going to look at our two credit card statements. And we had this one for January and February. We only have two months. Obviously, we would have the full year if it was for a year's worth of uh, information. And we're just going to say that uh, this is February's data. So we've got January and February. We'll close this back out. Go back to January. But what I'm going to do is just go through here and try to group this information in, into groupings, basically using Excel. And then we'll just summarize this information and then make an adjusting entry related to it. So the first one is the casino, right? So we're going to say that's probably personal. We're going to call that draws. So that's going to go to the draws account. So that's probably not business related, what we're saying. So that's 500. And then we've got the postage. Postage is going to go to, I think there was one called postage and uh, delivery or something like that. So that's going to be the expense account that we're going to hit on that. Office Depot is going to go to something like Office Supplies. So we'll say that's 190 and we'd have to group basically in this way. We could do this and we could just mark it up on this credit card statement and show it there and then just give a list of which accounts we need to go to. And by doing this, we're basically doing this on an accrual basis because even if we didn't pay the credit card off yet, we're counting the expense when it happened not when we paid it and that's kind of the difference that's one of our problems on a cash basis where we won't see the checks for the amounts that have not yet been paid on the credit card so we'll go back over here we'll see that issue once we post this as well so staples 
I'm going to say this is the second month. I'm just going to add this to, uh, not to draws, it's going to go to office supplies. I'm going to say staples is probably office supplies of 240. And we've got the steakhouse. Now that could be business or personal. I kind of, I forgot if we put it under draws or if we put it under meals and entertainment. I think it, I think we put it under meals and entertainment. So we're going to say, we'd have to ask about that and say, is it, is it, business or not if it's business we put it under meals and entertainment we have then fedex here so fedex i think it was under postage and deliveries the, is the account type so fedex i'm going to add to the 160 now we have another 130 and then amazon and we didn't we had to, we would have had to ask about that if they say that's business related maybe it's something like office supplies for amazon and then Office Depot, again, we're probably going to say that's Office Supplies at the 190. So those will be basically our expenses. If we sum these up, then we'd say, okay, we've got these amount of expenses uh, that we have to write off. This isn't an expense. That's a draw. But these amount of, of credit card charges, not how much we paid, credit card charges that we need to basically reallocate in the system. We'll do this first in our worksheet. So here's our adjusting entry worksheet that we've been working on. And we've got this credit card here. That's the one we're looking at. We need to reallocate this. Now note what's in there, 1,880. If we look at QuickBooks, we could see that those are the two payments we made. But according to the, to the QuickBooks statements here that we just added up, there's 2,370 of charges. And of course, that's because we made more charges than we've actually paid. So how can we deal with that? Well, we're going to have a credit card liability that we'll, we'll have to deal with when we allocate this out. So what we'll do is we'll allocate these to these payment, to these expense categories here. So I've basically made those yellow. This is a bit more complex of a, of a transaction that we're going to have here. So these yellow accounts are the ones we're dealing with. The first one's actually draws. It's not on the income statement. So that's, that's where we took out money for personal use. So if we go in here, we're going to say, okay, we spent this on the credit card, 500, but it was going to draws for personal use. So we're going to say, okay, draws, and that's going to be here. And we're going to increase it with a debit of 500. And then the next item we have is postage and delivery. I think we have an account, something like that, postage and delivery. I'll make that yellow. So we'll say that one's the other one. Copy that. We have charges for postage and delivery. We said that was for not 290. So we'll say 290. And then the next item we have is office supplies. So here's office supplies. I'll make that yellow. And we'll copy that. That's going to be here. And that was for the 1050 office supplies and the next item we have is meals and entertainment so meals and entertainment and we're just categorizing these out a uh, tax preparer might do this basically by hand possibly adding it to the to a to a profit and loss report but a, a formal report like this makes it kind of easier to see what is going on so then we're going to go meals and entertainment uh 530 Again, there might be other tax consequences here. I'm just kind of allocating these out uh, as we go to the proper categories. So then we have that. And then those are what's going to allocate out. Now, we're going to have to take it out of this account. Credit cards expense needs to go to zero because we're basically reallocating that information. We don't want anything in credit card expense. That's not a real expense category. So this needs to go down to zero. So I'm going to copy that and I've basically just reallocated this information. I'm going to make it go down by the 1880. Now the debits don't equal the credits, however. And so the difference is 490. So we have another 490 credit we got to put somewhere. I'm going to calculate that with a negative sum. We could just put in a negative 490, but I'm going to put negative sum of these 490. Where does that go? Well, that's the liability. That's what we haven't paid yet. That's what's still outstanding. So that's going to be a, a credit card payable. 
and so we'll right click and paste one two three now again for a tax preparation they might only need these items they might need hey what is expensable just tell me what expenses are and the ones that are personal then you might then they might not just add those up because again the tax preparer if it's just a tax preparing issue then they might not be totally reconciling it would be best if we totally reconcile because that makes us feel more comfortable that everything's done right but they might just want hey tell me what expenses were on your credit card <laughs> that uh, that we need to reallocate this credit card expense to the proper category and then we could just go through the credit card statements and say here are the expenses that you can reallocate but if we do the full thing then the difference is really why is there a difference because there's a credit card payable a liability that we still owe so if we record this then we're just going to say so now we're in balance the debits equal the credits in other words this amount two three seven zero equals this amount so if we record this then we're just going to say okay draws up here no effect on net income i'm going to record this by saying this equals that so whoop not there that's the wrong undo undo it's the one above it so here's draws equals that so draws goes up doesn't affect net income net income is only going up to here sales and expenses and then the next item is postage so we're going to say postage is here so here's postage i'm going to say this equals the postage bringing that balance up the next one is supplies so supplies we're going to say uh, office supplies is here so that equals office supplies bringing that balance up meals and entertainment meals and entertainment is here equals the meals and entertainment bringing that balance up credit card expense should go down to zero so here's credit card expense we want to get rid of that that's what we're reallocating in part equals this number it goes down to zero and finally credit card liability is a liability account equals this account so if we do this this way we, we're basically telling our telling the tax preparer at the end of the year we're going to say hey there's this credit card expense that we just put on as a lump sum you're going to have to basically remove that and and here's a list of actual expenses which may be and probably is more than the credit card expense because this is what we paid and the credit card list we're giving you is the charges on the credit card and then they can basically say okay i'm going to make this zero and then increase the expenses for what we give them as we just tick and tie off going through the credit card and say what uh, what amounts should be there but if we did it completely properly you can see how it all kind of ties out with this adjusted entry so let's do that on on quickbooks now same same concept on quickbooks we can enter this into quickbooks in the same format so if we were doing these adjusting entries in quickbooks we could just go company make journal entries and we will say that this is going to be for the draws so we're going to say owner draws was for 500 i believe it was adj for credit card I'm going to call it not agf adj for credit card and then the second account was postage and delivery so we're going to say postage and delivery and the amount for that was 290 so 290 290 next amount that we have is going to be office supplies so we'll call office supplies and the amount was the 1050 so 1050 adj for the credit card and then we have the meals and entertainment meals and entertainment amounts gonna be 530 530 adj credit card next one's gonna be the credit card expense for 1880 credit card expense credit 1880 and then we have finally the uh, credit card payable and notice it gives us this account here now and that should kind of tell us because it's telling us each time hey that's what you need to be in balance you're not in balance you're entering a lot of stuff here's what you need so that's going to and that ties out to what we need that what we see here so it looks like we haven't i haven't messed anything up which is shocking 
And so we're going to say then that uh, the liability, I don't see any credit card payable. So I'm going to set it up. Credit card payable account. We're going to set it up. And we could use the credit card type of account here. And that's what we'll do. It's basically another current liability, but it, they give you some options to help us out. So I'm going to say, okay, that's the one we want. It'll be a liability account. We'll set it up and say save and close. And that's it. We'll say, we should put the credit card adjustment here and save and close. And that should tie out to what we have, of course, uh, hopefully. So now we've got the credit card is the 490 there. We've got the draws is going to be the 3448. And that should be what we have on the draws here, 3448. And the other accounts that we did something to was the credit card expense account. It didn't go to zero like we would expect. And then, of course, why didn't it go to zero? Because I entered this as of the a wrong date. So to figure that out, let's go back up to the credit card payable and see if we could find this. And I'm going to say, okay, I don't see the data. I don't see my journal entry. So if I change the date and say, well, let's make it go like way back in time to like 2015 <laughs> and see if I find it. And there's the journal entry. So, of course, I, I, there's a date issue, which is typically the issue when there's a problem. I'm going to double click on it. And there's our journal entry in like a register format. Not very helpful in this case. So I'm going to double click on the journal entry here. And then there's our journal entry. So now I'll just change this. The date should be 12 31 19. So we did that on purpose, of course. And then we're going to say save and close. And now let's double check our numbers again. We'll close this out. Close this out. Okay, so now we're going to say that uh, the draws is there. We've got the purchases. And then the credit card expense goes down to zero. That makes sense now. Depreciation insurance. We have meals and entertainment 2170. Uh, meals and entertainment 2170. And this is another reason why it's kind of nice to do it in a worksheet like this because these adjusting entries are a little bit more complex typically and so when you do it in quickbooks you can't really see the connection miscellaneous office supplies 1970 office supplies 1970 so that looks good and then we've got the payroll payroll postage i think we did something there 470 so that's the 470 and i think that's basically it so it looks like it lines up here's the net income since we did a lot we might want to check net income we can go to the reports up top company and financial profit and loss change dates from 010119 to 123119 net income then would be uh 3293 3293 negative because it's a loss and 3293 it is a loss here because we have credits minus debits so credits minus debits. So it looks like we are, uh, we did the same thing in the two systems. Note in the more complex system, we had two other methods we did this and we, we actually recorded the payments in the, in the two methods. So uh, we won't need the adjustment. Hopefully we did the same categorization in this format as we did when we, when we recorded the expense as we go in the more complex method. So there shouldn't be an adjustment in other words. If we were tracking the payable and we would have this uh, loan payable. The, the difference is, of course, this is more of an accrual method. That's why we didn't record the payable, which is an, this was more of a cash method, which is why we didn't record the uh, payable here for the credit card and why we need this adjustment. If we veer away from the cash method, as we did in the other more complex method, then we would have the, the accrual account of credit card payable and record the expenses as we go. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.